Hello and welcome back to another entry in our Bolt Action Unit Guide series, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Heavy Howitzer Weapon Profile, which along with things like the Super Heavy Anti-Tank Gun is one of the big kahuna weapons in the game, notably sporting the highest high explosive profile and weapon template available, which right off the bat is going to make this weapon one of the major focal components in your list should you choose to bring one onto the battlefield. But let's go ahead and start taking a look at this unit's stats and breaking it down, starting off with its cost, as a heavy howitzer will come in at 115 points when run as an artillery piece with regular veterancy. So much like other heavy artillery pieces, we do see a pretty steep jump from the medium to the heavy variant here, much more dramatic than the 25 point increase from the light howitzer to the medium howitzer, but I will say right up front that that increase from medium to heavy howitzer is giving you a lot more here than you would with the standard anti-tank guns, as here we're going to see a pretty dramatic increase in template size, penetration, and also the amount of pins you can apply to a unit, and it's also going to be a lot more devastating against enemy units in buildings, as we will take a look at later. Later. But first up here, we are going to be seeing an average squad size of 5 men, following that steady trend of plus 1 wound per increase in artillery tier. And when combined with a gun shield that is often present for a 5 point inclusion, you're going to have a unit that is going to be able to survive getting targeted by small arms fire. And if this unit should become a victim of a zeroed in mortar, you will be able to survive some shellings by taking down orders which may bide you enough time to save this unit by, say, taking out the mortar team or their spotter. It's still very much not a situation that you want to find yourself in, but I have seen these larger crew artillery pieces survive mortar attacks, so while I wouldn't call this a durable unit, it definitely is a bit more survivable than its predecessors. And next up, we are going to see that you can add a spotter to this unit for just 10 points. As we all know at this point, howitzers can make use of both direct and indirect fire, and though while personally I am a big fan of using direct fire on a howitzer, the ability to fire indirectly is a very useful tool that does come up rather often, and as we discussed with our medium howitzer, it may be a viable strategy to hide this unit and make use of indirect fire only with a spotter, as it is a rather squishy unit at just 5 wounds, and if you are running a heavy howitzer as an artillery piece, it is going to be a prime target for your opponents, and if something like a medium mortar decides to walk onto this artillery piece, which is, mind you, rather immobile, your opponent is going to have a pretty steep trade-off in points in their favor. Still, as I mentioned in the medium howitzer video, relegating this unit to indirect fire only is going to make it a lot more difficult for it to make its points back and choose targets. And at 75 points, I think the medium howitzer is a unit that can viably make its points back with that indirect fire roll, but at 115 points, it's going to be a lot harder for your heavy howitzer to be justified in only making indirect fire attacks as that is a strategy that requires a lot of patience, and your opponent is definitely not going to risk staying immobile to be hit by that 4-inch heavy howitzer profile. And that, overall, is just going to make it really difficult for this thing to dig in and zero in on a target, so I think running a heavy howitzer only to be used with a spotter as an indirect fire weapon is not exactly the most viable way to run it, but you really do need to be careful when placing this artillery piece out in the open, as it will be an absolute lead magnet, and like I've discussed in so many videos before this, stationary artillery pieces are a beloved target of things like mortars. So when deploying a heavy howitzer artillery piece, I would say maybe hold off and wait for your enemy to drop down their mortar and their spotter prior to. But before moving along and taking a look at the actual weapon stat line for the heavy howitzer, let's go ahead and discuss the fixed keyword as it does have strong implications with the heavy howitzer because here you are not going to be able to relocate on a run order, you definitely need a tow to move this thing at all, and for a lot of factions it is somewhat difficult to find a tow that's capable of moving heavy artillery pieces. But overall, I'm really not a fan of paying extra points to bring a tow onto a battlefield. Most of the time, in my opinion, it just ends up being a waste of points, though it is mandatory in some scenarios. But that is going to make the placement of your heavy howitzer during deployment all the more important, and it really is a challenging game for artillery pieces to deploy in an area where they are going to see action and be able to target enemies, but also not receive too much incoming fire, most notably from other howitzers, mortars, and snipers. But let's go ahead and check out the stats on the heavy howitzer itself, starting off with the range, which of course we do have two of, one for direct and indirect fire. And here you are going to have a very generous 72 inch range for direct fire, which is going to cover most of the battlefield. And should you have an opportune deployment, you will be able to outrange most of your opponent's units, which can be highly advantageous on open battlefields. But again, it requires a lot of finesse during that deployment step, and also opportune battle scenarios. Meanwhile, with indirect fire, we are going to have a range bracket between 36 inches as a minimum and 84 inches as a maximum, 
And I gotta say, having three feet minimum distance to fire, meaning you cannot fire at enemy units within 36 inches indirectly, is a pretty big drawback here. Three feet is half the board's distance, and remember, in bolt action, you're not allowed to pre-measure your distance. So if you try and fire this thing indirectly, and it turns out they're within that 36 inch range, your shot will very simply count as a miss. And that, in my opinion, is another major reason that you wouldn't want to take this thing as a dedicated indirect fire unit and use it in a much more assault gun style role, as ahistorical as that may seem for some of these artillery pieces. But after our ranged profiles, we are going to see that this is a one-shot weapon, which of course is to be expected, with a penetration value of HE, meaning it is related to its HE profile and does not drop off over long range, which is actually a pretty major advantage on the heavy howitzer. As we will see, it does have a penetration value of plus 4, thanks to the 4-inch template, meaning this weapon is going to be more effective against armor than a light anti-tank gun, not only thanks to its increased range, but also because its penetration does not drop off beyond 24 inches. And because of that, with your 115 point premium cost for the heavy howitzer, you are getting a weapon that can play two roles, not only as an anti-infantry weapon, but also as a pretty proficient counter to armor, as the reach and extra pins applied by that high explosive profile can pose as a serious threat that can shut down enemy tanks a lot better than something like a light anti-tank gun would, even though they share the same penetration face value. But lastly, we are going to have the high explosive 4 inch profile itself, which of course, as the name suggests, is going to make use of the 4 inch template, the largest template available in the game, which can very easily swallow up an entire squad if they're not thoroughly spread out. But even if you do clip half the squad with this profile, which is, mind you, very easy to do, you're going to be killing pretty much every infantry unit in the game on a roll of 2+, plus, thanks to that plus 4 penetration value. And if you are capable of hitting this unit and getting them down to half strength, there is a good chance you're going to force them to run off the table with that morale check, as the 4-inch high explosive profile does apply a whopping D6 pins. And as we all know, once a unit in bolt action accumulates more than two pins, it gets really difficult for them to activate reliably, and you pretty much are forcing them to rally next turn, something that if you have an extreme surplus of pins, say five or six, can actually be very hard to shake even on a rally order. And when it comes down to force morale checks with that amount of pins potentially applied to you, the heavy howitzer is very good at making enemy infantry units that it doesn't outright kill run off the table. Now, that is something that the medium howitzer and even the light howitzer is capable of doing, but with the heavy howitzer, it becomes pretty much commonplace. And even if you get unlucky with that pin roll and roll something like, say, a 1 or a 2, the unit you did manage to hit is usually not going to be in a very good fighting condition, at least for the next turn. Now, there is the chance that your opponent is playing very smart and will take down orders whenever he knows a heavy howitzer shell is coming his way, and you will have those more professional games where your opponent spaces out his units in a very time-consuming dance, and also routinely takes down orders when being hit, and should you be unlucky enough in that game to roll a 1 or a 2 on those pins, it may feel like the heavy howitzer isn't pulling its weight, but that is going to be the worst case scenario when fielding a heavy howitzer. And even if your opponent is spacing out his units and taking down orders routinely to mitigate those hits, you can still shut down entire units with pins alone on the heavy howitzer, which is something that never feels good to be on the receiving end of. So, like people always say, bolt action isn't a game about wiping your opponents off the table like you would in, say, 40k, but rather a game about pins and hit modifiers. But I gotta say the heavy howitzer is a pretty strong argument against that hypothesis, as it's not only really, really good at applying pin markers, but also really good at forcing things to disappear from the tabletop. And while we're on the topic of things disappearing from the tabletop, let's go ahead and talk about this high explosive profile against buildings, as when targeting a unit inside a building, you are going to roll 3d6 for your hits, which has close to a 50-50 chance of destroying the entire building outright and killing every unit inside it. As we all know, if a single shot scores 10 or more hits against a building, it counts as being destroyed. So if you're playing an urban board and you really want to rubble the place outright, a heavy howitzer is going to be the weapon to take. So overall, the weapon profile on the heavy howitzer is incredibly impressive and one of the best unit deleters in the game. And that of course is going to make a heavy howitzer a major focal point in your list, both for how you use it as a commander, but also for what your enemy is going to target. So yes, if your opponent has the opportunity to attack and destroy a heavy howitzer unit, he will 100% be taking it, 
and that, in my opinion, makes the five-man heavy howitzer artillery piece a little bit too fragile for this weapon profile. Yes, if you get very opportune deployments, you can hammer away at your enemies from across the board without them being able to reach you, but if you're not thoroughly honed in on exactly what match you're playing, you're really rolling the dice with that one. And with the prevalence of things like Jeeps and Bren carriers with twin LMGs in the game, most players aren't going to be shy about bum rushing an artillery piece. And when you combine that with the fixed keyword and the lack of overall mobility on the artillery piece, I do find the heavy howitzer to be a weapon that is much, much preferably run as an armored support vehicle and 100% worthy of taking up that armored slot in a reinforced platoon, even if it is showing up on something rather fragile like a 7 plus self-propelled gun chassis. The sheer mobility is going to protect you from indirect fire and will allow you to relocate to find new targets should you need to. Now, there are some very impressive armored units wielding the heavy howitzer in the game, such as the Churchill AVRE or the Sturmtiger in Brumbar for the Germans, which are very, very tough nuts for your opponent to crack and can pretty much walk up and down a battlefield deleting units with little to no resistance. But that luxury comes at a very steep premium, and they will likely make up a third of your cost in points. Now, that doesn't mean you can't run them to great effect. You absolutely can, and I have been clean wiped off tables with units running things like the AVRE. But it is going to be a bit of a more uphill battle to make those points back compared to something like a Horo, who come in at around half the cost and can still delete units and turn the tide of a game with a few good hits. But with those more lightly armored, often open-topped SPGs, you are going to need to play a bit more conservatively and definitely make use of this weapon profile's range to stay out of danger as you would with the standard artillery piece. Really, both routes are very viable, but one is going to be putting more of your eggs in one basket, as if you lose your 300-point Churchill AVRE to a Flak 88, you're likely going to have a pretty bad time throughout the rest of the match. Meanwhile, if you get a bad deployment with something like a Horo or a Grille, something as simple as a Stuart could put it to shame. So overall, I have to say, while the Heavy Howitzer is one of the best weapon profiles in the game, it's something I would recommend to not run in that artillery slot, though it is certainly viable if you get the first strike. But for whatever faction you are playing, I would recommend sifting through your armored vehicle options and seeing if you have anything that has a heavy howitzer on it and adding that vehicle to your collection as they usually are extremely potent alternatives to taking your standard medium tank and your opponent is going to be sweating bullets every time that thing activates on the tabletop. I mean, after all, what's not to love about something that does D6 pins? But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What's your favorite heavy howitzer units? And how silly is it to get slapped around by one of these things? I doubt we'll have any naysayers to the potency of the heavy howitzer. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you don't miss more entries in this Bolt Action Unit Guide series, as I do intend for it to be incredibly comprehensive. And I'm happy you guys are along for the ride. And as always, until next time, take care.